Welcome to Crafts and Minis. Today I want to do a little tutorial on what I do with miniatures that have different bases than what you want to end up on your final piece. So I have a couple miniatures. I wanted to show you what I'm going to do to them. On the left you see this miniature by Reaper, the white one. Uh, it's in Reaper Bones material. And what I'm going to do to it um, applies to all the miniatures that I rebase, whether they have a tab on the base or they have an integral base like this. Um, and, you know, different companies choose different ways that they want to base. And also, I got this piece from Loka, which from Mantic Games. And I know Aaron, one of the commenters, was having a difficult time getting the base off. So, hey, we're going to try to do it this together. The tools that I'm going to be using are pretty simple. These are a pair of flat, so you see they're flat there, um, snips, right? I mean, they're like cutters that I get from Harbor Freight. And actually, I'll look it up and put a link in the description below to where I get these. Um, and then simply a hobby knife, right? That's not my favorite type of blade, by the way. So I prefer the blade, I forget which number that is, an 11 or something like that that goes all the way down to the join. But that's okay. This will work for our purposes. And my handy E6000 clear. Use the clear kind. Uh, the colored kinds uh, that I've used, the white especially, it just did not like for my purposes. And you'll see what we do. So real quick to show you on the Reaper guy. Here's our plan. Let me point it out right here. You want to look at what you're going to cut before you cut it. And the reason we rebase is so that you have more consistent basing throughout your pieces. Um, and like for pieces that are going to stand too high compared to other pieces, to keep them more in scale, you want to rebase them to put them flat against that base. So first, for this Reaper Bones, this is probably one of the easiest materials to cut, and this is part of your assembly and cleaning process. Look uh, at where I want to cut. I want to keep this hoof foot flat on the ground, and then I want to actually retain this rock. So just because it has like scenery in the base built in doesn't mean you have to cut it all the way. Now, if I wanted to cut it away and put in something else, great. So what I'm doing, I'm just clipping, right? I'm just clipping these different uh, parts here of the base that are going to eventually go away. And the nice thing is you don't have to be clean about these clips, right? I mean, in the sense that like you're not trying to care about what's left over. Whatever chunk you have works out fine. So eventually you're going to clip all the way around and you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay. The reason I'm leaving it like this is because I wanted to show you still that there's this piece between his feet right now, depending on what type of material you have to be really careful at this point. If this is a metal or a resin mini, you snip this, and uh, it doesn't bend as easy or it bends in the wrong way. And you're going to possibly on more fragile points like knees or ankles, snip the whole miniature. But instead, I'll show you from looking this way, right? I want to just get it flush against the hoof and then I'm just going to snip it away, right? Then I want to get it flush against the rock and snip it. And what's nice is you have an option at this point. You can either keep it like that and glue it to your base. Now these are the one inch um, teaching aids, the counting chips for teachers that I do a video on that I should probably link in the description below here too. And I could just glue it here and then later put on my basing material um, and all that. But you'll notice it's still got a little piece of that integral base there. So you could at this point start like cleaning it away with a hobby knife, but instead I like to use these clippers as much as I can. So I'm gonna get the little bit left right there. And then I like to find with these bones a way to do this. So hopefully you can see that okay. I'm trying to put the flat part against the foot as much as I can. And then whoop, clipping. And I know that's scary for some of you. You're right. You're like, I paid money for these minis. I don't want to ruin them. Ah, well, <laughs> you're going to have to try it if you want to base. So it's consistent, but you notice I got to do it now for this other one. Now, for a rock, it's way more forgiving. So, you know, I'll just do this however I can. And you'll notice this bones material cuts so easy. That's the nice thing about bones is rebasing them is super simple. You can get a whole load of them done in no time. And then let me show you what I'm going to do. I just take a little E6000 glue and as uh, Nick would do over at Crafts Nick's, let it do what it do. And I just need a little blob on the bottom of both feet. 
and then I just boop right onto the base and it's going to, as long as it's balanced, right, and not going to fall over, um, it's going to stay. And uh, you just let it dry and uh, you're good to go after, you know, I just let it dry for a day. That's all good. Um, base a bunch of stuff at once so you don't have to worry about that. But um, if it was falling over, you can always use other miniatures to prop it up in place. And that's something you do have to be kind of creative with and think about. If a mini is falling over, um, then you got to do that. But now what's awesome is is that base is going to match the rest of the round one-inch bases I have on all my other miniatures for D&D, which works out nice. Now, Aaron, like I said, who's a great member of this community, was having trouble with this. So I just wanted to show you how I attack a base that's just unwieldy and clunky. You just come at it in chunks, okay? That is a little bit harder than plastic. That is not like Bones plastic. And one, per, one way you could have maybe tried to attack it was just take a hobby knife here, um, set it against there, and as always, safety first when you're dealing with hobby knives, cut away from yourself. Um, and all of that. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I'm not going to show, show you my gnarly finger in this video. I actually cut through my fingernail the other week doing our hobby carelessly. So that's just a warning to the wise. Um, but I just want to show you, okay, you can cut this away as much as you can. Like just cut big chunks off the space. Now this is not breaking clean. Okay. These, um, are interesting because these are like a take on chess pieces, right? Oh, see? And then sometimes you get the gold like that. That whole piece breaks away because this bottom little part of his base was glued on. And so it comes across off real easy. Then you have this integral base. And now again, I'm just going to start snipping. So I'm going to take my clippers there and just do it against the foot like that and go just across the bottom and just show you how I would base or take off the base for these loca figures. And it's not too bad. It is more work than bone. So I totally see where that's coming from. But it's sometimes hard when you're just describing how to do something in the hobby online in a comment versus actually showing. So I totally appreciate show and tell more myself. So see, there you go. You got that big chunk there. And so what I would do is take this against the foot and then boom. And then I would take this against the foot and then boom. Now, here's a little tip I've picked up after basing way too many minis to count. You got to look at your feet here, okay? And you got to be careful. Now, one thing you could do at this point is make the executive decision. I just want to clean up this lower part, right? But leave a chunk of the original basing material there. So that stands flat. Now, if you're going to do this, you have to know how many other miniatures are you going to do like that. And maybe I just clean it up just a bit. And see, I told you I was going to use my hobby knife too. And I have not yet on these, right? But it's always nice to have around just in case you need it, especially for any flash, any uh, mold lines that you have to carve off. So really, that foot's done if I wanted to do it that way. And then I basically, boom, take off that big chunk here and take off... A big chunk there and now this is gonna sit a little higher on the base okay but once you put basic material down no problem but you know now that I'm looking at it even though it's a smaller join there with that foot you see that let's get crazy boomy flat ah. and the nice thing about feet is if you're doing these for the tabletop no one's gonna notice if you take off some toes like seriously um, it's not going to be that big of a deal. And if you really want to, you can fix it later. Um, but there you go. That's how I base the loca, dude. And let me just show you real quick, because I know it's always satisfying to see a piece brought to completion. And boom, boom, drops of E6000. Use a generous drop. It'll actually settle, so you're not going to get those rings of glue around the feet as easy. Now, this guy is not standing up as easy. What I should have done there on the bottom of his feet was just shave down a little bit with the hobby knife so that it was a little more flat because both of these are having a little trouble standing up flat. But again, you could use just anything you got lying around to help prop those up so they dry um, standing up the way you want. But notice... 
compared to that original base that I had on these guys, you can take a lot of material off, you can give them consistent basing, and you can get over your fear of converting. This is one of the easiest conversions to do to start. It might not seem like a conversion, but I say whenever you're getting the clippers after a model and clipping off big chunks, it's a conversion, even if it's just the integral base. So today, I hope you got just a little tip you can hang on to. And just don't be afraid to get after it. These clippers are amazing. And it's not like you need this particular brand from Harbor Freight, even though I'll link it in the description below. But I just wanted to show you that um, with a pair of these, I can do a ton of conversions um, on plastic minis. Uh, when I say conversions, I mean on the basing, right? Uh, to get them to stand up. So... Here's my plug for my products. Really, the only one that's uh, a specific one that I really like, the brand-wise, is the E6000 glue. It's amazing. And you can see, I need a new tube. Hope you appreciated this little tip. Don't be afraid to rebase your minis. And I really want you to, of course, go get after your hobby.